In this section of work, we're going to be looking at linear graphs and some of the important ideas. The first one is the gradient, and that's how steep the graph is. So if I was walking up this line here, how hard would it be for me to walk up it? How steep would it be? The second one is the intercepts. This point here is the y-intercept. This point here is the x-intercept. A straight line goes on forever. A straight line has a constant gradient. A straight line has an x and a y-intercept. Here are some straight line graphs. Let's have a look at their gradients. If I look at this graph here, you can see the gradient is constant. It is the same steepness all the way along it. Here are three other graphs over here. They're different graphs, but they have the same gradient. Each one of these is just as steep to walk up as the other. In the next graph, I've got two graphs or two linear equations. One is not quite as steep as the other. So this first one I pointed out has a smaller gradient than the second one. In the last graph, I've got a gradient that goes up, as if you're walking up the hill, and another one that goes down, down the hill. When you walk left to right and you go up a hill, that's a positive gradient. When you walk from left to right and you go down the hill, that's a negative gradient. Now rather than just saying a gradient it goes up or it goes down or it's steep or it's not steep, we need to calculate a value so we can compare them properly. And to do that we calculate the rise over the run. The gradient is equal to the rise over the run. To calculate the rise over the run you need to make a triangle on your graph. So I'm going to put a triangle here and I'm choosing that point because it's easy to see what's going on. The rise is how far you go up, and the run is how far you go across. So rise is up, and run is across. You need to start at a point on the graph like this one, and see how far you run across and rise up, because the direction is important. In both of these, I'm going to the positive direction. I'm going in the positive direction. I'm running in the positive x direction, I'm rising in the positive x direction. So that means the distance here is 2 for the rise, and the distance here for the run is 2, and so the answer is 1. The gradient of this graph is 1. Let's look at the second one. I make a triangle wherever I like, I'm going to make it here, as long as it's on the graph, and I need to get the rise over the run. So, let's have a look. I start at a point over here, I go positive direction for run, but I go down instead of up for rise. That means the rise value will be negative, because I'm going down instead of up. So let's put some values in. The rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, but down, so it's minus 4. The run is to the right, which is in the same direction as positive x, and that's 4 as well positive 4. That ends up being minus 1. So you can see that if you're going down the hill when you go from left to right, you end up with a negative gradient. If you go up the hill when you go left to right, you end up with a positive gradient. You can also calculate the gradient by just knowing two points that are on the line. So in this example here, I've got two points. 1 and 2 is the first point, 2 and 4 is the second point. So let's just plot those quickly so we can see where they are. So 1 and 2 means I go across 1 and up 2 and I get this point here, that's 1 and 2. 2 and 4 means I go across 2 and up 4 and I get this point here. What we do now is we look at the two points and we can actually just calculate the gradient using this rule here. And when we're doing that, we're really getting the rise over the run. The rise is actually the value of this point's y take away the value of this point's y. So I'd be doing 4 and taking away 2. 
the run is actually the value of this point's x, this point's x, take away this point's y. And that would be 2 take away 1. So you don't actually need to plot it to work it out. You just need to know the two points. So in this equation here that I've shown you, these values here are x and y values. This bigger one here, the 2 and the, and the 4, is x2 and y2. And this first one is x1 and y1. So I just need to substitute those values in. So, gradient equals 4 minus 2, that's this 4 here, and this two here, the two y values, and I'm subtracting the, the second one, take away the first one. And then the two x values, two minus one. That gives me two over one, which is two. So the gradient of that graph is two. And just to see that you can check it from the actual picture that I drew without the equation, it goes up 2 and across 1, that would be 2 for the rise, 1 for the run, 2 over 1 is 2, the same answer. So you don't actually need to draw the graph, you can just use this rule here to calculate the gradient. There are two special graphs that you can draw. One like the one on the left here, which is completely flat, and one on the right, which is completely vertical. For the one on the left, it turns out that the rise is zero because it doesn't go up any amount. And it doesn't matter how far across I go, I could go five across, I still go up zero. So the rise over the run is zero over whatever amount you go across, which always ends up being zero. So a horizontal graph like this one on the left always has a gradient of zero. A vertical graph like the one on the right is another thing again. Whatever you go up, Whatever your rise is, and let's just choose 5, the run is 0 because it doesn't go anywhere sideways. That ends up being undefined. You probably could say that's infinite steepness. We can also calculate the gradient from its rule. It turns out that the m in the rule is the gradient, which is a good reason for writing it that way in the first place. So if I've got y equals 5x plus 2, the gradient is 5. If I've got y equals minus 2x minus 2, the gradient is minus 2. The number that precedes the x, the x coefficient, which is where m is, m is the x coefficient, whatever that number is here and here is the gradient. So writing the rule in this way, the y equals mx plus c, is a very good way for finding gradients. Just while we're looking at the rule for a straight line, y is a variable because it can change, x is a variable because it can change, and they're the things that we change to plot the graph, m is always a constant for a linear graph, and c is a constant, they don't change. For a particular graph, M stays the same and C stays the same. This graph here, this number here, 5, doesn't change. This number here, 2, doesn't change. M and C are constants. The general rule is also a very good way for finding the y-intercept. If I've got an equation 5x, y equals 5x plus 2, the y-intercept is plus 2. The c on the end is the y-intercept. If I've got an equation y equals minus 2x minus 5, the y-intercept is minus 5. If I've got an equation y equals x, then I have no number added on the end. There's nothing added on. So the y-intercept is 0.